All right, guys, so the next um, thing that we want to look at is in the flow control, and it's called switch. And so when we put the switch out here, it looks pretty complicated, and it looks to be a pretty intense um, block here. But when we break it down, it's really not too bad, and we'll start to really understand what it is that we're asking for. So as we look at it, initially... It's uh, defaults to the touch sensor, and that's okay. This is a, maybe a good place to start. So we've got the touch sensor here, and it, right now it's on state one, which is that it is pressed. So right now what this is saying is that if the touch sensor is pressed, okay? Now you'll see then that it, it kind of goes into two separate areas here, one with a check mark and one that does not have a check mark. Okay, so what this is, this is really a way for us to create if then statements. So what this means then is if we run this program, if the touch sensor is pressed, then that means that it's true or that it's a check mark. So what we could do then is we could begin to build a program along this line. And if we press the touch sensor, then it would make this program be true and it would come up here and do this. That's why we call it an if-then statement or an if-then-else statement. So if this is pressed, then do this. If it's pressed, um, but it's not true, or if it's, you know, if uh, we have like bumped or released, um, then that would make it be that this is not true. So then do this instead, or what we also call an else, the else. So if uh, it's true, then do this. If it's not true, then do this. Okay? So that's how the switch works. So let's kind of show how we would use this for um, our color sensor. Okay? So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick color and I'm going to choose measure this time. And I'm going to choose color. And you'll notice then that I also get this add case. So I can actually pick um, and put in more than just two. Um, cases here. So what I want to do, I'm going to um, add a few more cases onto it just to kind of give me some space to work. And what I want to do, I, for the first one, I'm going to choose no color. And then what I want to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to pick my move steering block and I'm going to just turn it to be on. So what this means then is that um, I'm going to run the program and if my color sensor doesn't see any color, then it's just going to run the motor. And it's just going to turn it on. It's just going to go unlimited amount of time. Okay. I'm going to come down to my second block, and I'm going to say, let's say blue. Now, if you remember on our cube, we've got a cube that has blue and yellow on one side, and we have green and red on the other side. So if I choose blue, what I might say then is, what I want it to do is when it sees a blue, I want it to go backwards. And then I want it to turn to the right. So I'm going to come in here and I'm put another one in. And I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to make this go to about 50. And let's put this at two rotations. And then... Um, yeah, so it'll just kind of go and it'll turn to the right. Okay, that'll be pretty easy for you to see. Then I want to make this one, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make this one be yellow since it was blue and yellow. And I'm actually going to just take this and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it so that it does the same thing. So if it sees you the blue or the yellow, because they're both on the same side, it'll make it a little bit easier then back up away from the cube and turn to the right. Okay. Um, then on the other side of the cube, we had green and we had red. And so if it sees green and red, what I wanted to do is actually turn to the left. So I can take my program and I'm going to just copy it and I'm going to paste it. Right, but this time what I want it to do is instead of going to the right, if it sees the green or the red, I want it to 
go to the left. And so I'm going to put this in so that it will go to the left if it sees green or red. Now, just make sure you kind of click off of it so that um, you can uh, edit which way it's going to go. Right? If they're both selected, um, then you can't change these. So you got to just make sure you only have this one block selected. Okay, so now here's how this works. I'm going to run the program and my color sensor is going to be working. It's going to look to see if there's any color. If there's no color, it's just going to move forward. If there's a blue color, it's going to turn to the right. If it sees a yellow color, turn to the right. If it sees a green color, it's going to go to the left. And a red color is going to go to the left as well. Now, this though, um, you'll notice that there's no like values or anything. So it, it works kind of instantaneously. So the other thing that we're going to probably want to do is put this all inside of a loop. And we've worked with loops and we kind of know how that works. So the reason that we want to put it in a loop, though, is it's just going to make the program continuously run. Um, now, as it, you'll see the benefit of this as we um, run the program and it's looking for a color. And in, initially, if it sees doesn't see a color, it's just going to run for a short amount of time and it's going to stop. So we want to keep it in a loop so that it, that program is going to continue to run. As it sees a color, we may have to stop it and um, start it again. Otherwise, it's just going to kind of keep running, but we'll kind of get to that point as we as we get there. So this is how the switch works. All right? It looks and it look, sees if something's true, and if it is true, then it's going to do that. If it's not true, it's going to do something else, or it's going to keep going until it sees something um, that is fits that um, characteristic. Okay, all right. So let's check it out and actually see this in motion. How this works. Okay, guys. So I've got my switch program loaded onto here, and I've got my little cube there. And so what we're going to do is we're going to run the cube, the program, and it's going to look at this cube. And if it sees that it's yellow or blue, it's going to go to the right. And if it sees that it's green or red, it's going to go to the left. Uh, the only tricky part about this is that I've got to make sure that it gets right on the color and that it doesn't see like the gray on the sides. So we'll have to just kind of line it up. We'll do a pretty short distance. Um, so we'll do that and then we'll kind of make it go right towards the yellow blue side and then we'll do it again towards the green and red side and if it's yellow blue it should go to the right and if it's green or red it should go to the left so let's go ahead and give it a shot okay so there it went the first time and we got it so that it went and it saw the yellow blue and then it went to the right so now I'm going to turn it I'm going to go towards the green and red side, and we'll see if it goes the right way. It should go to the left this time. So I'm going to line it up again, try to get it right on, and let's run it this time. And this time it's going to turn to the left. And there we go. That's exactly what we wanted it to do. So depending on the color that it saw, then it did either... Uh, turn to the right or turn to the left and that's called the switch block and we'll get into the switch block a little bit more as well